Hey gamers, it's Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here one more time in collaboration with Chip3 Games to bring you a gear lock guide. And this is the last one I'm gonna be filming. I'm actually a little emotional about it. We've got Riffle. So Riffle is a special gear lock who can only be acquired through special means <clears throat> or when Chip Theory is feeling generous and makes them available in their online store for a set period of time. So if you really want Riffle, uh, they will come available periodically, probably a couple times a year in the Chip Theory online store. So watch out for them. But they're never gone forever. But I would say they're absolutely worth waiting for. And as you watch this video, you're going to realize why. So here we have all of Riffle's stuff. We have, as usual, a gear lock mat. We have some dice. We have a reference sheet. We've got a battle mat with a sample enemy on it. But the other thing that we have for Riffle is a deck of cards. So this deck of cards is split into two, and I'm going to explain that aspect of setup. So Riffle plays in a really special way. They are a really hardcore card sharp who manipulates a deck of cards for special effects in battle. So when you're playing with Riffle, you're playing too many bones, and then you're also like playing a little poker-like card game all your own that involves assembling a really good hand and then playing combos from it. So we're just going to look in this deck. As you can see, there are some suits, but they don't look like any card suits you've seen before. Instead, you have Vitality, Gears, Bones, and Vision. And then otherwise, this is basically like a card deck that you might recognize. It's just that the suits are a little bit different and they're gonna do special things for Riffle. So if you wanna check over some critical Riffle details with me, we're gonna talk about that aspect of their setup. So when you're putting Riffle together, Riffle is going to split their deck into two parts. So you count out 22 cards, and we'll just shuffle these because I've been in them, to form the active deck. And then the remainder of the deck is gonna go just above the gear lock mat, and that's gonna be the full deck. When you are playing as Riffle, typically you're gonna be interacting with the active deck, but there are dice that let you do stuff with the full deck and you're really gonna want to. But essentially what happens with Riffle is that in addition to doing normal gear lock stuff, and they are normal gear lock, you've got their stats up here, um, they are a melee fighter, but on top of that, they have an innate ability that's called card artist, and that's where these cards come from. So at the start of Riffle's turn, Riffle is always allowed to play one card combo from their hand to gain various effects. So at setup, you set up your deck, and you draw five cards. Ooh, this is a nice little hand, actually. Funnily enough, this is by accident, but I'll be showing you some stuff uh, with this hand. So Riffle will always draw up to five cards. That's a full hand size, uh, but they don't draw cards during their turn unless they play a specific die skill that allows them to draw cards. So you use dice to draw during your turn, uh, or you actually can redraw up to five at the end of Riffle's turn. But at the start of Riffle's turn during battle, Riffle's allowed to play one card combo from their hand, and the different suits of cards in that combo are going to trigger effects. So that combo size is limited at the start of the game, and I'm going to talk to you about how that happens, but let's just go ahead and talk about the suits and their powers first. So if you look up on the front of Riffle's gear lock reference guide, in a space where normally there are lots of dice, you're actually going to get information about card combos. So a combo can mean a couple of different things where Riffle's concerned. It can just mean a single card. So any one of these cards can be played at the start of their turn as a combo. Or if they have multiple dice trained here in their deck builder profession, then they are able to play larger combos depending on how many of these dice they've trained. So you could always play one, but as you start to train dice, you can always play one plus the number of dice you've trained in the deck builder profession. So you can play any one card. You can play two or more cards of the same suit. So something that's like a flush. You can play two or more cards of the same number. So like a matching number. So in this case, we've got three of a kind. Or you can play a run where you have two or more cards of consecutive numbers. So very much like poker, you can have matching suits, you can have straights, or you can have pairs, three of a kind, or four of a kind of cards. And whatever's in your combo, you play it at the start of your turn, and you get to choose the order that you deploy the cards in, and you shouldn't worry so much about their numeric value. What you're actually worried about is what each suit does. Because regardless of whether you're playing a queen of bones or a three, you're going to have the same card effect. The idea is just to get these combos so that you can play card effects in greater quantities. So actually, this hand is also great because there's something of each suit in here. So if you play a gears suit, then you can deal one damage to an adjacent baddie. And this is true regardless of the value on that gear card. If you play a card from the vitality suit, that lets you heal for one HP. If you play a card from the bone suit, it lets you gain one bones. 
And if you play a card from the Vision suit, then you can do one of two things. You can either move the top full deck card to the top of the active deck, which means that you're taking a card from here and you're putting it here where you can draw it later and you're just expanding the size of this deck. Or you can combine the Vision suit with the suit of another card in this combo that you can then apply to any unit. So I could do something like play a pair of queens and I could use this one to heal, but I could use the vision suit to apply that healing to a gear lock other than riffle, for example. You can also, of course, do that with gears in order to cause damage to a baddie who's not adjacent to you. So overall, that's very, very handy. And again, when you play different combinations of cards, it's not so much about getting higher numbers. It's about getting numbers and suits that go together so that you can do as much of this as possible. If you do get a full house, which is a pair and then three of a kind, then you can resolve each card's suit effect and then draw a hand of five cards. So you totally deplete your hand and then you get to replenish it right away. And then if you get four of a kind, so four cards with the same number on them, then you can resolve each card's suit effect twice. And not only can you do that, but those effects can be applied to any unit. So you don't have to worry about adjacency or whether it's riffle, you can apply it to anybody. And then if you get a straight flush, so five cards that are consecutive numbers and they're all the same suit, then you get kind of an upgraded version of the suit powers. So for gears, you get to do five true damage to any baddie instead of just do one. With vitality, each gear lock may heal to their full HP. Good Lord, instead of just heal for one HP as riffle. For bones, each gear lock can add up to five bones to their backup plan instead of riffle just gaining one bone. And then with vision, you flip the active and full decks face up for the rest of the adventure. And you can look through both decks at any time, which if you're looking for really nice combos and trying to get things from the same suits and trying to get things that are, you know, numbers that are consecutive, that's actually super handy. So if you can get one of these really great combos, um, then you are in very, very good shape. The other thing that's very interesting is that Riffle's innate plus one card savant allows them to use vision cards as any number when they're playing a matching or run card combo. So what that means is that with an eight plus one, your vision cards suddenly become a lot more flexible and they make it a lot easier to get that match or to get that run. So as you can probably tell, Riffle's deck is super useful and is going to let you do a lot of interesting things. There are a couple things you should also be warned about, however. One of those things is, again, that Riffle typically only draws at the end of their turn or in response to a die effect. So make sure that you're playing that out. Generally speaking, only one card combo may be played on Riffle's turn and at the beginning of their turn, although there are cards that are going to let you change that up a bit. And then the other thing you need to notice is the status of your active deck, because if Riffle runs out of cards in this deck, you don't just automatically shuffle the discard. You have to actually perform skills in order to replenish this active deck and to shuffle the discard pile in. So make sure that you're paying good attention to that as you go, or else you're going to end up with a card shortage. And for Riffle, that is super not good. So with that said, that's the basics of Riffle's deck. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about their dice and what they do. So it's kind of a trade-off for having this nice deck. Riffle actually only has 10 skill dice, which is going to make this part a lot faster to talk about, actually, especially because Riffle's skills generally have to do with the cards. So let's go ahead and talk about their deck builder profession. And this is also, once again, their most important profession because... At the beginning of the game, Riffle can only play a one card combo, which means that no matter how good your hand is, you're limited. The more dice you train in this profession, the more cards you can play up to a maximum combo size of five. So you're gonna want to train these if you want to power Riffle up to max power. So the first die in this profession is called card counting and it has no bones faces. It just has this hand of cards with the numbers two through five printed in the right hand corner, depending on which die face you roll. Card counting lets you look at the number of cards printed on the die from the top of the active deck. Then you can place those cards on the top or bottom of either the active or the full deck. So basically what this is letting you do is look through cards that are coming up. Think about whether you want them in upcoming combos or in your deck at all. And then you can either set yourself up for success on a future turn by putting them on top of the active deck, save them for later by putting them on the bottom of the active deck, or you can stick them in the full deck and get them out of your active deck if you don't think that you're going to be playing those cards at all. So card counting lets you push the odds in your favor when you're trying to draw desirable card combos as Riffle. So that is the amazing card counting. Next, we're going to have a die called Burn and Turn. And once again, this is a die that focuses on deck manipulation. So what we've got going on here is that Burn and Turn lets you discard up to the number printed on the die of cards from your hand and then draw back up to five cards and then you can play a card combo. So Burn and Turn will have die faces with numbers from two to four. 
you are allowed to discard up to that number of cards and draw back up to five, and then you get to play an extra card combo. So what that means is that you can have already played a card in your normal combo phase at the start of your turn, then use this die to replenish your hand and give yourself the potential to play a second combo on your turn. So if you've been, for example, setting yourself up really nicely with card counting, you can then play burn in turn to draw those cards and make a lot of them right away, which is very cool. So that's burn and turn. We're gonna go ahead and go over to house edge because that's a starter. So you have to start with card counting to get to burn and turn. You have to do house edge to get to deck stacking. So we're gonna go over to house edge really quick, die number four. So once again, House Edge doesn't have any bone spaces. It only has this symbol with the numbers one through four on the faces. And what this one lets you do is draw the number of cards printed on the die face from the full deck. So not your active deck, your full deck, and then place them in the discard. Then you can choose up to the number of cards on the die from the discard, and then you place those on the bottom of the full deck. So this allows you to pull cards from the full deck, which can be very helpful because sometimes you want to get those cards out of the full deck and into the active deck. And then it gives you the option to put some of the cards from your discard pile back into the full deck. So you can bring some cards over from the full deck and then you can get some cards out of your active deck by taking them out of your discard with this die. Alternatively, if you just want more active cards, then you can not put as many cards from your discard pile back in the full deck as you took out. The die gives you a choice. So that is House Edge. And then we got a deck stacking. So once again, deck stacking, uh, it does not have any bone spaces. It's just got die faces with numbers from three to six in that top right corner. And deck stacking lets you choose the number of cards in the die from the discard pile and then shuffle them into the active deck. So if you discarded your favorite cards and you want them back, then deck stacking is the way to return them to the active deck and then hopefully you'll be able to draw them. If you're using this die in combination with other dice from the deck builder profession, then maybe you can set it up so you get really desirable cards on top of your active deck, thus increasing your odds of drawing something really, really nice and playing a great combo with it. So that is deck stacking. And all of those together are Riffle's deck builder profession. Riffle's second profession is called card shark. So let's go ahead and go through the dice for that. The first one in this profession is called good read. And once again, it has no bone spaces. It only has numbers printed on it from one to three. Good read is a die that goes in an active slot. So you roll this die, you put it in your active slot, and then after the move step of a baddie's turn, then you can exhaust this die to move up to the number of positions on that die. So if a baddie moves towards you, stands adjacent to you, and is getting ready to attack you, you actually have the option to exhaust this die and then just kind of like leap a couple of positions away from it up to the number that's printed on the die. So it gives you a little bit of a slippery dodging ability. It just seems really appropriate for Riffle and is super fun to use. So for example, if we put this die here in an active slot and this baddie is coming over to attack Riffle, after the baddie's movement phase, I can exhaust this die and move two away, thus making a clean escape. Ha, take that baddie. So that is good read. We've also got bleeding chips, which again is a die with no bone spaces. You'll notice that Riffle basically has to get their bones from their card combos, and that makes them a little bit different to play. Of course, that'll also happen on attack and defense dice, but most Gearlock skills do have bone spaces, and Riffles don't until we get to their consumable. But bleeding chips has faces with this chip stacks, and the numbers on the die face go from zero to three. And so what the way that bleeding chips works is you put it in a lock slot and use it as a counter. And then after a baddie deals damage that removes any amount of defense from you, then you can reduce this die by one to add a bleed effect die to that baddie. So if this die is on value three and it's locked and Riffle is here, and let's say that they have a defense die, if this baddie attacks and it would remove Riffle's defense, then they can remove this die, turn this counter down by one, and then put a bleed effect on that baddie, which is gonna cause true damage to it at the start of its subsequent turns. So that's a pretty nice die to have. It's a nice little lockable counter. So that is bleeding chips. And then the third die in this profession is called drawing dead. So drawing dead has this lovely ace on it and values in the top right corner from one to three. And drawing dead is a die that is an active die that's placed on a baddie. So when you roll this die, you can place it on any baddie until the end of that baddie's next turn. After the baddie rolls its dice on its turn, but before you resolve those dice, then you can change 
up to the number of its rolled dice as printed on the drawing dead die to bones. So basically, if a baddie is rolling dice with bones on them, such as attack and defense dice, and they are going to hit you, you can use this die to change the results to a bones instead. And that is drawing dead. Then Riffle has one more profession called gambler, and they are a gambler. And the first die in this profession is called luck of the draw. Luck of the draw is going to have this symbol with a number between 5 and 10 printed in the upper right corner. And this one lets you guess a number and a suit. Then you look at this number, the number printed on the die, of cards from the top of the full deck. So the one that's up above your gear lock mat. And if there are at least the guess number of cards in the stated suit, choose and add the guess number of cards of that suit to the top of the active deck. So let's say that I'm going to guess that there are three gears. I could draw nine cards. One, two, three, four, five. Six, whoop, there's one, seven, eight. There's another one, nine, ah, I didn't get it, nine. So I drew nine cards. I guessed that there'd be three gears, but I was wrong. If there had been three gears, I could take all these gear cards and put them on top of my deck. Also interesting is that if I had guessed one gear card, I could have taken one gear card that came off this deck, but not both. So you wanna try to guess about right. So that is luck of the draw or lack thereof if you're me. And then we've got Chip and a Chair, which is one of Riffle's more interesting dice. And this is how they can kind of defend themselves from getting knocked out of the game, even if they're playing solo. So as they say in poker, you're not out of the game as long as you've got a Chip and a Chair. And this die is that for Riffle. This is a die that goes in an active slot, and you do have to spend a dexterity to get this die and put it in that slot. However, you don't roll it right away. What you do with this die instead is you don't roll it, you put it in your active slot and then you just leave it there until a situation where Riffle would be KO'd. At that point, you roll this die and you have to live with the results. So this, this side represents one last chip. When you would be KO'd by damage from a baddie and you roll your chip in a chair die, if this is the result you get, you ignore all damage from that baddie and set your HP to one. So it just kind of gives you like you're not quite down yet. This next face is called angle shooting. And this one's really better for co-op. You're about to see why. When you would be KO'd by damage from a baddie and you roll this result, you apply all damage that you would be dealt by that baddie that turn to the closest party member instead. So Riffle can take this damage off of themselves and just kind of punt it over to somebody else to deal with. If there is no one else, well, you're out of luck. And then this last result is by far the best. This is dead hand. So if this is the roll that you get when a baddie would KO you, then all the damage that baddie was going to do to you, you instead deal to that baddie. So you can avoid all of the damage yourself and put it on the baddie instead of on somebody that you actually like. So that's chip in a chair and it's Riffle's sort of last ditch die. You put it in one of their active slots and you just hang out until they would be KO'd and then you roll it and hope for the best. Then Riffle does have one consumable. It's called Sleeved Card. And actually this is Riffle's only die that has bones faces on it. Um, it's got one, set, one face with two bones and one face with three. And the other faces all represent one of the suits in Riffle's card deck. So when you roll this consumable, you can either use it immediately if it's usable in context, or you can lock it and save it for later. But it basically represents one card of the suit that is printed on this die. So you can use this die as a card of any number from the suit shown, which basically gives you a little bit of extra oomph when you're putting together a card combo. Uh, and so you lock it, you wait for the right opportunity, and you can use it as any number of the suit printed. I do want to specify, by the way, that this die gets played as a card when it's incorporated into a card combo. And that means that it does have to be played within current card combo limits. So if you've only got two dice trained in the deck builder profession, and that means you can only play three cards, then you can't play three cards and this die. You can only play two cards and then this die with them. So make sure you're staying within your card count limits, even though it's a die. It's still a card for these purposes. So that is sleeved card. And those are all of Riffle's dice. You know, they're different just because they have fewer dice. What you're really doing is using the dice to largely manipulate the cards. And then of course, card shark and gambler give you some other kind of gambling related abilities. That brings us to Riffle's backup plan, which is also very well integrated with their skills. For one bone, you can play out of turn and that lets Riffle play a card combo. So that means that Riffle can play a second card combo when they might've already played one earlier in the turn. 
Because remember, the correct moment to play a card combo for Riffle is at the start of Riffle's turn. So this backup plan lets you play something extra at a different point in the turn. For two bones, you can do Call the Clock. At the end of the round, you can move a non-tyrant baddie, who is highest on the initiative meter, to the last spot in the initiative meter. So you can punt a baddie that you don't like, who's very high up the meter, down to the bottom, so it gives you a little more time to deal with them. For three bones, you can do Pocket Pair. That lets you resolve two different suit effects, and you do not have to actually have the cards in order to do it. So it has to be different suit effects, but you can resolve one of each, whether or not you've got the cards for it, and without discarding any of the cards you're currently holding. It is also legal to use the Vision suit in combination with the other suit you choose to affect somebody who's not adjacent to you. For four bones, you've got Maverick, which lets you deal the number of damage to any baddie that's equal to the number of cards you played in your start of turn card combo. So if you've got large combos and then you manage to play a big one, you can then use Maverick if you've got enough bones to deal extra damage on top and take advantage of that chunky combo. And then for five bones, you've got Reshuffle that lets you shuffle the discard pile into the active deck. This is how you get your discards back. So don't forget, the discard pile does not automatically get reshuffled to make a new deck when your deck runs thin. You're going to want some options, and reshuffle is the best one for that. And then for six bones, you upgrade to an 8 plus 1, uh, which, as you recall, makes Riffle card a savant. So they can use vision cards as any number when they're playing a matching or run card combo. So it just gives vision cards that extra bit of flexibility and awesomeness. So those are Riffle's skills and Riffle's backup plan. Uh, we will talk a little bit about beginner build strat. Riffle is delicate to play, although also very interesting because of the cards. So Riffle needs at least one extra HP because otherwise they are very vulnerable to early battle chaos. After that, you might want to give them some more decks so they have more options because you're going to want to do a lot of deck manipulation and jumping around is going to take a lot of dice. For skills, uh, Riffle should prioritize grabbing some deck builder skills first because they're going to need them to build bigger card combos. You don't want to sit there and just only be able to play one card as your combo because you didn't get any of these dice. Like, that just will not do. And then you might want something like Good Read, which, of course, gives Riffle a little bit of extra movement that will keep them safe from batty attacks. And you might also want to look at Drawing Dead, which will also help them kind of stay alive for an extra couple of turns because it's putting things into their deck that they need. So that is Riffle. I think that Riffle is one of the more creative gear locks ever to come out for Too Many Bones. They can be a little bit tough to play in both co-op and in solo. As you can see, they have fairly high difficulty ratings. But I think it's very much worth the effort to master their skills, especially if you love card manipulation. So take a gamble at Game Night Tonight and give Riffle a try. You will absolutely not regret it. So this is the last gear lock guide that I'm filming, at least as far as I know. So I just want to thank everybody at the end of this video for being along for the ride with me. If there are other gear lock guides that you haven't watched yet, I have made them at this point. So by all means, go check them out. Thanks for coming on this wild trip through all the gear locks of Too Many Bones with me. I hope that you try them all and you get as much joy out of them as I have. So go play some Too Many Bones tonight and happy gaming, everybody.